is all right. Like uh, Max already said, I work for Holiday Check and I'm currently doing some infrastructure work and doing tooling stuff there. And I'm today talking about uh, how to do uh, service metrics for your microservices efficiently with Prometheus. And so let's get started. If it works. Okay, so first question, of course, why? Um, so this is maybe your infrastructure, you have a service, you have another service, you have a bunch of hardware and OS metrics, and that's it. So no monitoring at all. That's no good, right? And then maybe it looks something like this. We have the metrics of the first service going into some database, and we do some reporting on this, and then you have a second service, which has also some reporting, and it goes into a different database, and you have some reporting, some reporting there. And uh, then, in the end, you also have some other metrics that go to some else. But this is also not that ideal, because, well, sometimes you have to <coughs> have correlated metrics for your hardware and your services, or different services together. So, we usually want to have something like this, where everything um, goes into one database, and you have, then you have central reporting and notifications and all that stuff on it. So, how you can achieve that? Well, in my opinion, the best solution is Prometheus. Um, and what's that? It's a time series database, so it stores numbers and their changes over time. Um, many of them, and with um, like from different services with different labels, and uh, then you can use uh, some other uh, software graphing dashboards to generate nice uh, graphs and out of it, or to generate alerts. And um, so there are many different solutions for this, but um, we sort of got uh, Prometheus for doing this because it has a very powerful query language and is also very efficient. And so coming back to the picture from before, this is more or less how it looks like now. You have, uh, like I said, the database in the middle, Prometheus, which stores all the different metrics data, and then you have a bunch of stuff uh, putting um, data into it. So um, exporters, so-called, um, that collect uh, metrics from your infrastructure, from your hardware, from your operating system, and from like, um, um, older uh, legacy services, for example, AJProxy or Apache or your database services, which you can't um, directly instrument by um, modifying the source code. Uh, then you have usually some batch jobs that are not um, that long running that, so that they can be, uh, that their metrics can be collected from uh, Prometheus over time so they get, uh, get their data into the uh, thing called the push gateway which is like a proxy that stores the metrics. And then you also have um, your new microservices that directly talk to Prometheus. And in the end, it all goes out to do, um, a graphic, a graphic solutions, for example, uh, Crown Dash or uh, Graphite. Um, and it also can, can generate alerts based on, on uh, queries you do uh, on your metrics. Okay, so let's talk about a few examples about metrics. Um, so for example, you have um, usually when you have like a micro, microservice based infrastructure that's, that's based on HTTP, every service more or less uh, emits a metric called uh, HTTP uh, request total, which is a simple count of how many requests you have over since the, since the uh, service was started. And um, you can use this, for example, for graphing um, the, the rate of requests, or correlated together with the uh, request times to get uh, an, an average uh, timing for the request. Um, 
And usually when you, when you do something like um, uh, do stats C, for example, for your metrics, then you have, um, you, you, have a, you have a metric called, for example, HT, uh, your, your service name, and then .http, and then .requests, or something like that, and this kind of comes up. So you can get um, your, um, for every service uh, a metric, um, you have to you have to then change the, the first name and some, uh, start the uh, of the metric and um, it gets confusing pretty soon. And uh, what you can do with Prometheus is um, you can uh, create a metric with a certain like generic name. So for example, here the HTTP request total, and then attach labels to it instead of prefixing it with a service name or something like that to uh, namespace the metric. Um, this is normally uh, even done by the database server itself because it automatically attaches labels uh, like the, the service name um, to the metrics when it reads the metrics on the service. Um, so for example here, uh, we have the, uh, the generic metric name uh, HTTP request total, which if you would query that would return you all the um, request counts for all the services you have possibly even uh, Prometheus itself, because it can also um, instrument itself. Um, but usually you query it for uh, something like, uh, give me all um, metric, uh, all counts where the uh, return code was something like 400 or 500 or something. And um, you can do that using the, the query language by matching on first the, the metric name and then the label, even with a um, regular expression. And there was an example at the bottom, which doesn't fit on this, on this uh, unfortunately. Okay, so um, then regarding uh, types, what uh, Prometheus supports is uh, basic counters, so for example like the request totals. Uh, it also supports uh, gorges, so values that not go uh, up all the time as a counter that can also vary in value. <coughs> for example, um, memory consumption or something like that. And uh, the, the third and fourth type is a bit more complex because uh, <coughs> it, it generates um, um, uh, value buckets or uh, quant files either on the server or on the client. And this can be used for um, tracking the uh, timings or uh, observations <coughs> um, uh, over time in, in, in contrast to, for example, in, in contrast to where, for example, the um, request total where you can have an absolute measure. You can count it up every time you get a new request. Whereas uh, um, when you measure the request timing, you measure the timing for every request. So that's all nice, but like I said, how do you get the data into Prometheus? And this is um, um, a bit different compared to, for example, StatsD and other graphing solutions, in that it's not um, based on uh, the service sending the data, for example, as a UDP packet to the metric server, but instead the metric server um, holding the service for the metric data. This uh, has, its, uh, has its advantages regarding the, the microservice approach because um, there you uh, usually have some kind of uh, services coming, so it's possible for the database server to find um, the, the services it's looking for. And you can also, if you want to test something new, that you query for your metric service, but you don't want to uh, do that on, on the production one, you can just start the, the Prometheus database server yourself locally and still get all the metrics that the uh, normal server would get. And you also don't have to reconfigure the services when the uh, metric server changes. So um, the services themselves don't know anything about the the metrics collection going on, they just get the request. 
Um, is it still possible to do it the other way around, or would you definitely not recommend that, or is that even not possible? Um, so it is possible via um, um, like going through a proxy kind of approach. So for example, for what I said earlier with the batch jobs, which usually don't run long enough to get um, um, collect the scraped by the database, they leave their data in a, in, in a gateway, which then gets uh, collected. And there is also a similar thing for um, that's D. So if, if you still have software that you can't modify and that produces metrics in, in the stats D format, you can also use this uh, gateway software to get the data into Prometheus. Yeah. And then you can, um, like, because there then you have the problem with the, with the naming, uh, there, the, this gateway can also do uh, like regular expression um, matches against the name of the, of the stats D metric and then transform that into labels. But I would recommend going the other way. Okay, um, so now, um, like I, I skipped the other two possibilities of getting data into it, and just describe the uh, instrument your service approach. And um, so, what's nice is there are client libraries for all major programming languages. And, um, it's very easy to, to integrate them. You usually uh, just have to define the dependency in whatever format your programming language requires. And then um, you can define the metrics wherever you need to. And uh, what, how the client library usually works is that it has a central repository where it keeps track of all the metrics that you define, so you can define it anywhere you like. And they all get uh, collected into this registry and then, um, as a second step, you uh, only have to define the, the uh, scraping endpoint that the database server uses. And if you if you have a service already, uh, you usually already have an uh, HTTP uh, server running, and you, ju you just have to add this um, this uh, additional endpoint. There. And then, of course, you have to tell the the Prometheus server where your service is. And you can, of course, do that manually by um, changing the configuration file of the database. But it also supports uh, different methods of uh, service discovery, which I will be coming to later. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing is, um, the, the, also, if there is no client library for your, uh, the language or framework you're using, then it's very simple to implement because all it needs to do is keep track of the current value of the values because all the aggregation stuff will be done on the, on the database server. What is the theory of the theory of following and the theory of the data? The service usually just updates the, the variables when things, or for example, every time you hit the service, with a new request, it updates the request counter and the timing and all that stuff. And the default uh, polling interval is 15 seconds. So it, like, the, the numbers on the, uh, on the database server change every 15 seconds, which is usually precise enough. Yeah, and yeah, like I said, the service only has to keep track of the very simple number stuff and the database server does press, even if the even through like restarts and um, crashes of the servers, because this usually just means that some uh, some of the labels change, but the uh, queries that you normally use stay the same. Okay, and in the end, this is something that uh, comes out of this. This is Prodash uh, showing one of our services running. So the top left is the uh, request rate, um, yeah. And the the other nice thing is you can just look at the data, uh, like with uh, with some of the graphing solutions. You can also define um, alerts, and um, with the uh, using the the, um, the query language of Prometheus. So there's not really a restriction. You can like 
uh, compare metrics from different services. You can compare metrics from services to other metrics. You can also go back in time and uh, see differences. For example, uh, was was the load today higher or twice? Just uh, the difference between the load today and one week ago is it like surprisingly high or something like that? Um, and then generate um, alerts out of this, and the alerts themselves are also metrics, so you can actually query for the alerts again. <coughs> Doing alerts over alerts is maybe not so good again, but um, um, then when you divide, <coughs> um, so the uh, when Prometheus generates an alert, it just sends um, a notification to a component called the alert manager, and this one then uh, aggregates the different alerts and generates the noti notifications uh, based on your um, uh, rules that you get to. And it has various outputs for the um, for email or for chat services, and, uh, ticketing solutions. So, sorry, I have to step back quickly to the suggestion of. Uh, Using a pull method instead of pushing alerts, right? So that alerts are pulled, as you suggest. Does, in my opinion, this doesn't scale too well, does it? I mean, um, do you mean pulling the alerts or the yes. metrics? Well, the, the metrics. The metrics. Um, it, it's, it's an ongoing discussion which one scales better. Um, for me, um, the, the pull method works much better. Um, for, for well, example, when, we have the uh, when you use, um, for example, StatsD, which does um, metrics, uh, so you, there you could create a UDP packet and send that to some metrics selection server. And uh, this is there, if you, if, if you send too many um, uh, packets so that the network gets congested, you won't really notice this until you say uh, until you see that your metrics don't work anymore whereas uh, in the pool model the database server can decide itself um, when uh, to pull metrics and it also it, it doesn't like every 15 seconds pull all different services but uh, um, like, uh, distributes this over time so there's constant uh, Collection going on, but every service is hit uh, in the interval that you define when you fall to 15 seconds. Okay. Did that help? Yeah, excellent. Yeah. If you have multiple instances of the same service, if you have five instances of the same application, you don't you get only metrics from one application, not from all of them, right? You well, usually, usually you don't um, you don't use the the uh, end user access point of your service, but uh, have the database server query all the instances of your service. So if you have uh, five instances of your service, you will get metrics from all five, because they can behave differently. And so you, you have to, uh, the, the database server has to query one level deeper than the normal request would. But this is usually hand handled by the service discovery. Well, um, thanks for that question. Um, service discovery. So usually, if you have run, uh, running many services, then you don't want to edit the configuration file yourself because usually it changes quite frequently. Um, and uh, this is made possible by the service discovery, which uh, supports very different methods. Um, should have one of those. The JSON file is just a fallback. When everything else fails, you can have something else generate a JSON file which then is read from the server. That's really a last minute fallback. Okay, um, nearly at the end, what not to do? Um, so, like I said, um, this is uh, a sampling based approach. So, it's usually um, Good enough, yeah, but if you want to do something like 
Uh, how much money did we make over the last uh, 10 minutes or uh, hour or something? Then usually another approach where you can like record the exact numbers and pull that from some log file or something and sum that up is usually the better choice. Um, this uh, sampling approach is uh, usually good enough for some things like request rates and um, so the getting getting a view of the general picture. Um, then the second thing is um, do not define the labels too fine grained. Uh, internally, you, every time you change the label, you you will create a new time series, which means that your database will grow. Although you can create many thousand time series without any problem. Um, and then what happens sometimes is that different people use different metric types for the same name. This should not happen, but if it happens, it's not so much of a problem because in the end, uh, the wrong name will just like, um, um, fall out of the database. Um, because it's, it's, a, it's a rolling database that forgets stuff after a predefined time. Okay, um, that's it. This was just a very short intro. Um, in, so I'm, I'm happy to uh, for your questions now. And if you want, I also have a small demo prepared, um, which you can try yourself. Okay, demo. <laughs> no. So first, uh, do you have any questions? Is it so? I mean, all the service. What happens to server service restarts? Like if it's counting requests and it's just running in some container and you replace it with a new one, what, was, what, what happens to the numbers? So um, if the service restarts, uh, because it just keeps the, the metrics in memory, the counter starts, for example, for the request starts at zero again. But this is no problem because it will just create uh, it, usually they then restart on, for example, a different port or um, a different machine or something like that. And so they will create a new... Um, it just crashes. Or it just crashes, then maybe even it stays the same. So it will just... Um, the, the metric will like go down to zero. But if you do, uh, for example, the rate calculation... Over the... Total, total strong, get like a total counter of requests which you send forward, so that must be speed requests. And then HP server goes down twice a day, then there's no... Yeah, it, it, it will still work. Um, because because the, the server knows that uh, it, this is a counter that if, if it goes back to zero, it, um, it will just sum this up. Yeah. But it, it of course depends on, your, on, on what your query is. But, uh, usually if you do requests like what was our total for today, you do a sum over many metrics as well and just match on, for example, the service name, and this will stay the same, so you, you will have the, um, the correct sum and also the uh, correct um, uh, rate calculation. Um, can you elaborate a little more on how the discovery works in the service? Um, sure. It largely depends on which discovery you have available. So, um, for example, the list. Um, yeah. um, so depending on what um, your other infrastructure components are, uh, you will have one or more of those available. So for example, if you use uh, Marathon based on Mesos, just giving you an example here, um, then you can use uh, the Marathon discovery, which then queries the Marathon service for Hey, what services do you have, and which, on which machines, and which ports do they run, and will automatically generate the, the configuration for your services. Mm -hmm. right. and, yeah. So, do you, do you know what service coming do you have, or not? Uh, I think cons. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you will. In the Prometheus configuration, you will tell it to use console and tell it the server there, and it will query console for, okay. for the server, uh, services you have. Tell Prometheus where they are. 
at least the, you and the red shirt. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I hope we can phrase this in a good way. Um, so you're saying the scraping approach where you provide a slash metrics uh, kind of endpoint is the better way to do this. I think this is great for, for snapshots you can take. Like, okay, at this moment, the CPU was exactly this. <coughs> But in other cases, I kind of feel that if you take this method, you have to have an internal state of what has happened until you get this, this request. Because if you have a stats T approach, for instance, you have to fire and forget, you, you collect what kind of metric will have, response time, for instance, for a method, you shoot the stats C and then it's done. So how would this work in your approach, or the, this approach? So, for example, for uh, collecting request times, um, when you use one of the client libraries there, you usually have, uh, you define a metric, so re metric is HTTP request time in milliseconds and something like that, and then at the start of your um, um, block that you want to time, you start a counter, and in the end you say, okay, I'm done now, and this then will say your current measurement into your uh, in-memory so it's true, you will not get all the, uh, the different measurements you take, but uh, they will average over time. You know? but there's an internal state that you're keeping for those 15 seconds. Yeah, but you will, you, you will do that anyway, because you have to keep track of it when your uh, timer started. You also do that for the stats. You say, for example, uh, right. current system time, and save that somewhere in the long uh, Variable and in the end you just you take the difference and it's it's not much different. Right. Yes, yes. Are you using the error parameter in production? Right. Come again? Error manager. Are you using it in production? Yes, we do. Do you use the old one or the new one? Um, that's good. good question. <laughs> yeah, but it's the old one they had some type of the style set we don't use it. Um, they had like seeing and monitoring their monitoring system, and there seemed to be some uncertainty around that. Curious if you have any experience. Okay, I I just seen one alert manager. Did they still say that it's an experimental? You use at your own uh, discretion, but I don't know the second one. So maybe it's 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 the current one that we're using. Okay, do you have something else monitoring your? It's a monitor. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, so, we use Prometheus for the, the services and uh, the, well, the, the hardware nodes they're running on, and Docker, and Mesos, and Marathon, and um, all the infrastructure components that are connected there, so the in incoming proxy and all that stuff. But this is a, just a part of and not all our uh, uh, stuff is running in there yet. Um, so we still have other monitoring solutions for the stuff that's not migrated there yet. And um, the, the machines Prometheus is running on are, of course, also when it, they have um, different monitoring that, for example, goes into the relic. But we want to move this to Prometheus. Uh, remember the slide with the wild mix where everyone. Okay, later. Okay. Uh, okay, more questions, please? Otherwise, I have to show them all. Um, do we maybe have some something to talk about while I start the stuff? Yeah, we'll oh, ask the first question, by the way. I promised the president for whoever asked the first question. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, who was the first question? So we have an awesome software service Lanyard here. Mm -hmm. Who wants it? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>
It's a metric server, so it's not that spectacular. <laughs> so, and uh, this demo also doesn't include any service discovery because it's purely local. Um, but uh, what you see here is that you have, so for example, here, coming back to, I should use this. Coming back to your question regarding the multiple instances. Um, for example, here. Um, Although you just see like everyone, every target group they call uh, has just one endpoint, uh, you can have more than one there, and then they are grouped by the uh, job name, um, and you usually don't query by the exact instance name, but you query by the job name. Okay, it's not. Any, what should I show? Mm -hmm. Prepare the time, because it was, I expected this for you to take away. Mm -hmm. Can I scroll? Can I scroll? some traffic. I think they expected a bit more in resolution when developing this. <laughs> okay, well, um, <laughs> not intentionally here, 888 uh, requests per minute. Yeah, and it stopped for half ah, because of failures. Nothing. Um, okay, um, any more nice ideas to try out? Okay, then, thanks for listening. And